we are going to be covering uh, quite a few important topics that we're going to be dealing with as far as as benefits go and as far as administration of benefits go and possible leaves and layoffs and things like that. Uh, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to start with the very first uh, topic here. Uh, so number one, we're going to start off with what's on everybody's mind right now. And there's not everybody joining this webinar is going to be in the same exact situation, but we're, we're in similar situations and we're all going to need probably parts of what I'm talking about. Um, and then we'll go from there. So at the very first checkbox that we're going to make is we're going to write down at the top of the page, do I need to lay staff off? Okay. And you're going to just write your response to that underneath that. And the response is, is one of three options. It's yes, I need to lay staff off. I'm going to eventually need to lay staff off, but not at this time. And number three is not to my knowledge, we're probably fine. We're not going to have to lay staff off. Okay. So write your response to that because your response to that is going to be what you need to check uh, what your checklist is going to be and what you need to have checked off. Everyone's going to need to focus on this point, And this is an area where a lot of people maybe haven't taken the time to focus. So, so one thing that you should have in place, if you have a group benefit plan where you have staff on the plan, you should have a written group benefits policy uh, on hand. Okay. So Right underneath the the last checkbox, you're just going to make another one. You're going to write group benefits policy, and I'm not talking about your 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 policy itself, like your your contract. I'm talking about this is a policy to uh, discuss how you're going to handle leaves of absence for benefits, how you're going to treat benefits during maternity leaves, during disability, during sickness leaves, during times when a spouse needs to be a caretaker. How are you going to handle benefits during that time? Okay. And you need to have a policy in place because how you handle this situation that's coming up now is going to be your policy of how you handle future situations because you can't just pick and choose how you're going to handle benefits um, with any given situation. You need to have a document uh, so that everything seems uh, fair and equal for everybody. Um, if you don't have this document, uh, you can just let us know afterwards. We do have a sample document that we will we will send out to you so that you can see what we're talking about. And and now this isn't a legal document, uh, but it but it'll give you an outline of what you should have. And then you can contact your HR person or you can contact your uh, your legal representative to have something uh, officially drafted up for you. So what's going to be in your group benefits policy? So like I said, regardless of whether you're laying staff off right now, you're laying staff off in a few months, or you're, you're not laying staff off at this time, um, you're still going to need to have these things covered in that group policy. Okay. So first thing you're going to need to know is how long are you going, are you going to be extending benefits during given leaves of absence? Okay, so what that means is I have an employee who is disabled. How long am I going to provide that employee with benefits um, before uh, he's going to have to look for, for his or her own coverage? Okay, um, because the answer, if you don't have a policy in place, is just forever. And then, you know, I run into situations where I sit down with uh, clients and they've said, well, we've had Joe who's been on disability for you know, three years and he's the highest claimant on our policy and well, we can't get rid of him. So, uh, so you don't want to be in that type of a situation. So you need to have for this specific COVID-19 leave, you're going to need to have a policy in place that handles how you're going to be handling benefits during this specific leave of absence. Um, so first off, you're going to need to say, this is how long we're going to extend benefits to our employees. And the standard in any continuation of benefits uh, type of agreement is six months. Okay. Anything beyond six months, you're likely going to have to get permission from the insurer. Um, but six months is pretty much what everybody's targeting right now. Um, so then how in that same document, you're going to have to outline 
how are they going to be paying you for the benefits? Because they are not at work anymore, okay? So they're not getting a paycheck. So you're going to, the standard is that your staff would give you six months upfront of the payment for benefits so that they can have their benefits while on, uh, on this leave of absence. That would be similar to a maternity leave. That's typically how they're handled because you need to make sure that you're getting those costs covered while uh, those employees are absent from work. You also need to determine at what level you're going to be contributing to the benefits during this leave of absence. So are you going to be contributing 50% again to the cost of the benefits? Are you going to be uh, having the, the employees handle 100% of the cost of the benefits? Those are some uh, answers that you're going to want to have in that document. The other thing you're gonna have um, is, are there any classes of staff? So maybe, maybe you're handling, you know, your long time management staff are going to have uh, your benefits handled for, you know, two years. Maybe you're gonna have your, uh, you know, your, your everyday staff or maybe people who have been with you for under a year, you're gonna handle their leave of absence differently. It's okay to do that as long as it's equal across all classes. Um, and again, that it's in your group benefits policy document so that you can refer to it if there are any uh, issues in the future. Not going to have any uh, layoffs at this time. And so in that situation, um, you're, you're going to still get your group benefits policy uh, put together, um, but you are now going to be looking at different things like uh, do you have employees that are going to be needing short-term disability because they've been medically quarantined or things like that and we'll move into that in a little while um, but but um, as long as you have that policy in place then you'll have a document to refer to uh, you get to the point where you are uh, you have your policy in place you're going to do your layoffs now uh, what you need to do is you need to be contacting your insurer and we're not going to give you super specific information here because um, each insurer might handle things a little bit differently and you know there's so many insurers out there that we don't want to um, you know go out on a limb and say this is how this one's handling it when they're not so so one thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to contact that insurer if you are terminating staff uh, or if you plan to do so and find out what their process is for terminating staff and, and during a leave of absence. I would say probably most cases you're going to get a termination form from the insurer and then on that form you're going to indicate that you are paying, uh, for, you know, that the, be the benefits are going to be continued for that staff member and then you're going to have to put in there a return to work date and that return to work date has to be um, you know, without approval, it has to be within six months. Okay, so if you want to leave it as six months just to be safe, that might be the best way to go. But all, all insurers pretty much have that, that document that's going to allow you to continue on with benefits. Next thing is um, short-term disability. So, so we've covered off now that you, uh, you know, what policy you need to have in place for, for, for layoffs. Now, what happens if you have staff that are not necessarily going to be laid off, but they are medically quarantined? Um, and when I say medically quarantined, I don't mean the two weeks suggested leave by the government where they say, listen, you know, you have the sniffles, go home for a couple of weeks. What I'm talking about is they uh, have either had a positive test for COVID-19 or they have, um, you know, been, been told that somebody maybe they know has symptoms or, or whatever the case is and, and by a physician is recommended that they be quarantined. In those situations, they're very likely to be qualified for a weekly indemnity, indemnity or short-term disability payout. Um, so you need to be contacting your insurer to make sure that you're getting the forms, the proper forms for that staff member so that they can start collecting on that to the short-term disability uh, claim. Again, that's now. This is just how it's been treated this week. Uh, a couple weeks ago, they'd said, "Oh, well, if you're just quarantined, we'll pay out our short-term disability payments." Insurers kind of redacted that pretty quickly when the government said that they would cover those leaves. So, so um, this is just the up-to-date information up to today's date. But this is 
an evolving situation and things will change and you know we'll try to update it on the website as best as possible so that you can get the the latest information um so now let's say that they they aren't going to be medically quarantined uh they don't uh qualify for short-term disability and they uh and they they aren't going you aren't going to continue on benefits for them Okay, so in this type of a situation, what you're going to do is it's just a simple termination of benefits. So you're gonna let your employee know that the benefits are gonna be terminated and you're, gonna con you're just gonna complete that termination form with no continuation of benefits selected on it. And what you're going to do is, I would suggest that you share the, this information with them. This is the best information that um, that I have yet to find as far as, um, as far as giving a simple explanation to staff of how they can be covered. So this document right here, and, and I don't expect you to write all this down, but we'll be, A, we'll be posting this on the website and B, if you do want it, we can, we can email it out after, but you'll see on this document that it says, um, what to do in, and this is non benefits related. So this is what to do in specific situations that pertain to employment insurance and being laid off just in general without benefits. So it says here, laid off due to work closures, laid off due to self quarantine, laid off due to ineligible for EI, eligible for EI. This is just a really good and informative snapshot that I would recommend you send out to all of your staff if you are planning on doing any type of layoffs or, or if somebody's being self-quarantined or whatever the case is, um, because this will be uh, really easy for them to go on and, and they can develop their own checklists and then they can take the actions that are recommended um, on this form. So, so this is a really, really good form if you wanna just relay information to your staff so that they're looked after as best as possible. So that pretty much covers the short-term disability. Um, so again, create a checkbox if you need to. If your plan doesn't have short-term disability, then don't worry about it. Just skip straight to this form and make sure that your employees know how to claim EI. Also make sure that, that you are online on the uh, my uh, account on, on CRA and that you are able to process those um, uh, records of employment pretty quickly because people will be needed the, needing this coverage in a pretty short order. All right, so um, then we, we're going to want to move on to travel. So travel is pretty touch and go right now. Uh, there, you know, the the Canada government website is updating travel restrictions pretty consistently. So you're able to get some pretty up to date information on there. Most insurers are kind of following the advisory put out by the Canadian government. The, as of, you know, right now, most insurers are paying out of country claims, uh, but this again is an evolving situation and you need to before A, you do any traveling, which everybody would strongly recommend or uh, recommend not doing. And before you have any staff do any traveling, you absolutely must contact your travel insurance provider and see what the up-to-date information is. And you need to do that on a consistent basis because these insurance uh, companies keep kind of changing what is covered and what isn't covered as this whole lockdown, um, self-quarantine, social distancing situation uh, continues. So make sure that you don't do anything without consulting your travel insurance documents before you leave. Now, that's that's okay. I think the general population kind of understands that you shouldn't be headed to China or Tahiti or whatever right now. But I think that what people aren't thinking about is let's say transportation companies and this is really good information to share with them if you know of companies that do a lot of out of province out of country travel so maybe they're they're doing long haul trucking or they're delivering or they're doing work that involves them uh, crossing borders then it's really important that you check this travel information and have them check this travel information um, every single time they leave because they're going to need to know the up-to-date information before they leave. 
um, like I said, right now, it's nothing to really uh, freak out about. You do have to check it, but, but right now they are, most insurers are covering out of province claims if something does happen. Um, but if they are, let's say they cross the border and then for whatever reason, the border's shut down and they can't get back into Canada, um, you know, they're going to need to find out if their coverage is going to cover them for an extended stay uh, out of province that's unexpected. Uh, and a lot of people aren't thinking about that situation happening. So, so just make sure again, uh, make a checkbox, mark off travel coverage and find out what your insurer is covering you for, for travel, especially if it's necessary for work. Uh, the next thing is telemedicine. So a lot of providers are offering telemedicine services, teledoc services to their uh, plan members. Um, and then basically what that means is that you can call in uh, or you can join on your phone or you can join on your, your computer and you can have an in-person uh, consultation with a doctor or a nurse or, or whatever the case is. And doctors and nurses at this point are really preferring that you do it that way, opposed to going into a location or going into a hospital and taking up resources at this point. So if your plan does cover telemedicine services, so that's uh, you know online visits with a nurse or online visits with a doctor, make sure that you're relaying that information to your staff and make sure that they all know how to access that information. And if you're not sure of whether or not your group benefit policy covers you for telemedicine services or teledoc services or anything like that, make sure that you send us an email or, or give us a call and we can, uh, or give your advisor a call, whatever the case is, and, and um, we can check your policy and make sure that, that you, you, you are covered for it, okay? Next would be your employee, uh, employee assistance program. So this is if your plan includes coverage uh, for uh, counseling services, um, you know, so that can be anything from marriage, burnout, stress, fatigue, anxiety, um, you know, nutritional services, uh, all these type of things. These are going to be really, really important for your staff at this time because everybody's a little stressed out. And, you know, so a lot of these employee assistance programs have extended coverage or made the coverage more accessible or added more staff um, because they understand that at this point, it's very likely that people will be accessing these services. And if you do have this service on your plan, that's great. If you don't, you may want to consult somebody about adding it onto your plan at this point because it's pretty inexpensive and it really goes over and above at a time like this when people are really freaking out because it, it's a great way to keep uh, morale going and, and if somebody can talk to a therapist or counselor or whatever the case is. Also, if uh, in a lot of cases, if they are already seeing a therapist or counselor, they can continue that coverage on through their uh, EAP program and then not be paying out of pocket for it. Um, Again, it's pretty inexpensive and it's really, really worthwhile to think about adding it onto your plan if you don't already and, uh, and have it on there so, so that people can access it. Um, so outside of that, uh, that you know, those are the basics that I wanted to cover right now because I found that those things were the highest priority. And so, you know, we, uh, every Friday we do a webinar. A lot of our webinar, uh, our Friday webinars are gonna be kind of related to, to plan management and, and, you know, making sure that your plans are up to date and these type of things. So if you did find this valuable, let us know. If there's other content that you'd like to see, let us know. Um, all of our staff are still going to be working through this. So if you do need uh, help with your plan or you do need uh, service on your plan, make sure you email us and let us know. Um, and we will be very happy to help you out.